Happy viewers, welcome to today's inspiring episode of Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living. Join us as we travel to the small town of Shepparton, Surrey, in South East England, where we will visit Miss Dorothy Beeson and her sanctuary for the regal and graceful swan. in the early 1980s, the Swan Sanctuary is now the largest and only completely self-contained Swan Hospital in the UK. My name is uh, Stephen Knight. Um, I'm one of the trustees of the uh, Swan Sanctuary. Me and my partner Dorothy, we've uh, built this uh, uh, Swan Hospital up over the years. We certainly sort of uh, get called to all sorts of rescues. We're kept quite busy here at the hospital. We probably treat 2,000 a year. Um, and as you can see, we also deal with other water birds. We just specialise in swans, but take anything that is from the water. Among the largest of the flying aquatic birds, the elegant swan belongs to a family that includes geese and ducks. There are seven swan species in the world. Globally, the most commonly found species is the mute swan, who resides in Europe, North America and North Central Asia. The beautiful black swan is native to Australia and New Zealand, and perhaps the rarest and most distinctive of all swans, the black-necked swan, is native to South America. Swans are found in temperate environments around open waters, rivers and lakes. These vegans feasts on roots, tubers, stems and leaves of aquatic and submerged plants and live peacefully with their family members, spending most of their time on the water. The adult male, called a cob, is generally bigger and heavier than the adult female, often referred to as a pen. A young swan is called a signet. In recognition of Dorothy Beeson's steadfast work in rescuing and treating the country's beloved swans on the River Thames in 1990, Miss Beeson was awarded the Medal of the Order of the British Empire for Meritorious Service, also known as the British Empire Medal. In 2000, for her contributions to the betterment of animal welfare, she received the Lord Erskine Award, one of the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals' highest honours, and in 2001, she was recognised with the Pride of Britain Award. The tender-hearted Dorothy Beeson, who is also a vegetarian, shares with us how she first became involved in looking after these graceful, angelic beings. It all started um, 30 years ago when I found a cob swan with fishing line hanging from his beak and lots of weights and a float and one thing and another um, and how very difficult it was to get any assistance. Um, I did eventually find a vet that um, looked after him uh, and operated and took the hook out and goodness knows what. But when he was put back on the water I needed to look after him a few more days. And quite honestly, then, um, I've never been without a swan since. During its first decade of existence, the Swan Sanctuary grew from a small reserve in Ms. Beeson's back garden into a two-acre site located in Egham, Surrey. In order to finance the expanded sanctuary, she sold her house and moved into a caravan with her partner Stephen. As the sanctuary's workload rapidly increased, Dorothy Beeson realised that an even bigger plot of land was needed. After years of searching, a new home was found in 2005 and the sanctuary was shifted to its current location in Shepparton, Middlesex on the River Thames. We have about 15 acres of land here, so um, 
we still have a little bit more that we could expand to. We've got a major lake, which is the best part of five acres. We've got a meadow where the swans come out when they choose and just sit about on the grass, especially when it's nice. They like to graze. Um, we have the main hospital. We have the rehabilitation ponds. We have a nursery, what we call our nursery area. We have our woodland ponds. We have a disabled pond. One of the most common causes of injury to swans is the accidental swallowing of discarded fish hooks while they are foraging for food in the riverbeds. Power lines located near water also pose an enormous danger to swans who run the risk of becoming entangled or crashing into them during flight. The biggest threat to swans, however, is the pollution from human activities which tremendously harm their habitat. We get calls um, about swan rescues from just about anywhere. Um, it could be a fishing related injury, it could be a collision, they could hit pylons, they could hit buildings, they could just miss land on roads, or it could be just general um, vandalism. This is one of the, probably the only places that has its own operating theatre and x-ray rooms so it means that when a patient comes in, they don't then have to be transported to a veterinary surgery for a vet to do whatever and then the bird brought back because that's so very unsettling for them. Here it's all done under the one roof. Initially, when a, when a swan is put in, is examined in the treatment room there. We assess the injuries and the vet comes and is, is, uh, decides on a course of treatment. While they're on treatment, they stay in the hospital. Once their, their actual treatment medications have finished, they go to one of the little outside pools so that we can observe them for another few days. And then those that go home, which is the majority really, um, can then go from that point and we take, them from, we take them back to where they've come from. Those that have actually had a wing amputation or have their leg in a cast or whatever, they have to stay with us, of course, for quite some time. The, the bird, once it's recovered, is then put into a, a fairly natural situation, which is our main lake, um, where they can live without any trouble from fishermen or humans or whatever, um, but still live as close as nature intended, as is possible for a bird in that position. Let's now follow Dorothy Beeson for a fun tour around the loving sanctuary and meet the adorable residents. First, let's visit the hospital. This whole unit is the hospital come partial rehabilitation or even just a growing area for some of these babies um, because when they join us they've usually been through some trauma or other and need a nice safe environment to spend the first month or two. This is a goose, a Canada goose. Um, this one here came from a hit Hampton Court Bridge. So he's, he's being quiet today, but he's taking himself over to the food. In here, probably the sickest one is the one that impaled himself on a, a metal railings, and he's having daily treatment to, to keep the wound um, nice. It is actually doing very well, but he's still on high doses of antibiotics. They love the areas of sunshine, as you can see, where the sun's coming through the window. In here we've got our intensive care unit. We've got um, two beds which are normally post-operative beds. So where they've just had surgery, they come in here until um, they've, they've 
We've got over anaesthetics, etc. And um, and then they're moved back into the main part of the hospital. But for these little fellas, who've all got the most awful leg injuries, um, it's easier just to manage them in here. But they're quite happy. They're certainly eating well. Quite lovely little creatures. Two little grey legs and an Egyptian goose. The treatment room. This is where we just do the basics. <laughs> and then here's the operating theatre, which is always kept ready to go because we never know when we've got an emergency. This is um, a little incubator, normally for fledglings, which I must feed again in a moment. This will take, uh, you know, um, a gosling, a signet, a duckling, whatever we need, if it needs warming up very quickly. Hello. Hello, come on then. Come on then, try standing on the perch. And he has to be fed about every 40 minutes. The three here only arrived a couple of hours ago. In here, a mixture of all sorts. One gull that's got to go back to Dorset. Um, some coots. We seem to have a mass of coots at the moment with leg injuries. So, you know, they feel better when they've got the water to get on and, and behave more naturally. Here it helps that they can get onto the water and, you know, hopefully clean themselves, although they, they seem to be more enjoying the sun, just lolling about and enjoying the sun. But they did have quite a journey today. This is the um, meadow area, and we like to leave the gates to the lake open, and they can the, the birds there can just come out and sit around, do a bit of grazing, chill out, you know, do their own thing. They just like to sometimes just sit and enjoy the sun, you know, so it's quite nice. To ensure the safe and fast recovery of the sanctuary's residents, the outdoor enclosures are also well protected. We are now introduced to Charlie, a special swan who has resided at the Swan Sanctuary for almost two decades. This enclosure is, um, has got its own waterway which comes through and eventually goes through the reed bed. It's a nice, safe area. We've given them quite a large enclosure here and um, uh, normally the, it would have a few swans on it but Charlie the Hooper has been a bit moody so we're, we're just allowing him a little bit of space on his own. This is Charlie. And come on then, come on. Char uh, Charlie's a hooper swan, and his mate is a cross hooper trumpeter. So it's quite a, quite a combination, not that, not one that you would normally find. So she's unique, actually. <laughs> Hello, hey, good boy. Come on, come on. And that's that's his mate. His mate is. It's just misses. Did you know that swan couples have one of the most romantic relationships in the bird kingdom and typically pair for life? They are often called lovebirds. And when two swans meet face to face, their elongated necks form a beautiful heart shape that is seen as a symbol of lasting affection. Our appreciation Dorothy Beeson for giving us a first-hand look at this swan sanctuary. Indeed, the birds that come here for healing are truly blessed to be under your care. With love and gratitude, Supreme Master Ching Hai is honouring the swan sanctuary with the Shining World Compassion Award and £10,000. For more information on the swan sanctuary, please visit www theswansanctuary.org.uk Join us again next Tuesday, September 6th on Vegetarianism, The Noble Way of Living 
As we continue our tour around the Swan Sanctuary, learn how swans communicate and hear a touching story about how a pair of swans became reunited after a rescue. Lively viewers, thank you for joining us today on our programme. May we always appreciate the eternal beauty of God's creation. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash VEG.